Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cartoon Pad. I want to welcome my co-host, Michael. Hi, Bob. And my reliable producer, Marty. Hello, everybody. Hi, so how's everyone doing? What's up? What's the news? How is the uh, open, Bob? The, the opener is good. Um, no, I'll just as jump. In- the New York, the U.S. Right. Open, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, the U.S. Open was very good. I got invited to this ritzy bitsy um, luxury box and had a chance to hang out with uh, Patrick McEnroe, who I crossed paths with when I was in the juniors, the junior tennis. I, I've been playing tennis, um, and uh, the big part of why I'm here because I didn't finish high school, but I was a good tennis player in high school. And I was able to get into college without finishing high school. So I played tournaments and I actually played uh, at a pro tournament one time and I used to teach tennis. So it was all kind of neat and uh, it was what good to see it, him. Would, wouldn't it have been easier just to uh, like finish the math classes than to become a tennis prodigy so much so that you would get into college playing tennis? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, it was weird that my mom let me do that i I was just having this horrible uh, experience with school and she didn't fight it she just let me quit you know you went to high school in the bronx no i grew up there but then i moved out to long island in um by the time i was in high school the family moved out to patchogue and out there i had i was getting taught how to play tennis by a friend and Mm -hmm. without his help i would have not gotten into college because he enabled me to afford it. I, I wasn't going to be able to afford going to school, but he enabled me to have a, a scholarship. Uh, have you That's ever amazing. seen Bob? Have you ever seen Bob in tennis shorts? That's a sight. I have not. Yes. I just I'm in shorts now. I just finished playing. I, I just taught actually a couple of people on the court. So tomorrow you, I'm playing against a pro. So uh, Patrick was there, but John was busy doing never did I ever voiceovers. You know what it is is. Patrick McEnroe, I'm sure, was hired by Deloitte to just spice up the party. He is in the luxury box as a paid guest. And he went there and ate as much sushi as he could. And everyone else in the luxury box had zero interest in tennis, but their backs to the match on the stadium. But they were all talking business and stuff like that. So Patrick McEnroe is to Clint Howard, is to Ron Howard. He's pretty accomplished. I I shared the story or two about when he was a junior, where there used to be the tournament drawers going up on the wall at the at the Port Washington Tennis Academy. And then people would look to see who got stuck playing against Patrick McEnroe, who at that time was amazing. He was a he was a great player, automatic loss for someone. And once we found out who had to play Patrick McEnroe, people would laugh at the person stuck with him. And he's mm. been a broadcaster. He's been a tennis commentator for a very long time. You know? Super nice guy. He is also was a Davis Cup captain for 10 years. Then he also ran the USTA the ve- developmental program for juniors. And now he has his own tennis club over at Randall Island. That's why he recognized me. He knew me because I go to his club. But uh, does he cart- draw cartoons? No, and I'll tell you, in the room, no one knew who he was. People asked if he was related to John Macro. And then there was a few people who recognized me and had texted no, their they parents. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah. Yeah, but when they said when they saw Bob, they said, Can we get some more ice, please? I mean, you know No, they knew they knew my work from the New Yorker. They saw my name on the guest list. And they had me recognize they recognized those calves. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they had me sign things and I had brought my books. And people went home with some copies of my new cat book. Bob drags a bookshelf on wheels around with him. It's like a bookmobile that it's just Bob's books. And everywhere he goes, he literally has all of his books with him. So if anyone needs a copy, he's got it. Really, he pushes it. It's it's like it's like a book. It's like it's four shelves high. It's made out of mahogany. (laughs) It's beautiful. And you can you know, you can sleep on top of it like um, like Snoopy. In peanuts, are you done? No, that's did you know, Did you guys know that? That's before I, uh, security showed up, and no, uh, Bob ran for it. This was a crowd of people who had no name recognition at all in the sport, and didn't know any of the players. Never heard any of the name, but, but they, they knew, knew you, Bob New Yorker. Well, they're they're a New Yorker crowd, and they knew the cartoons. They said, "Oh my my parents got me into your 
your work and blah, blah, blah. And it's true. Wow. So it helped my sister who was there for negotiations. They, they were conducting a, a meeting. They just used the luxury box as a location for a meeting. And there was a, Insane. you know, Venus Williams playing the last match of her career behind their back and nobody watched it. That's quite a power play if you are having a meeting. I have all of my meetings at the McDonald's uh, off Flatfoot Avenue in Brooklyn. <laughs> Doesn't work quite as well. You gave away your location. Now you're going to have to change places because you're going to have crowds of fans yeah. going to that McDonald's. I have all my you, meetings at the uh, Manitowoc Greyhound bus stop. You didn't I, think won't, this I won't tell you what the type of meetings they are. <laughs> okay, let's go on with the intro, Bob. No, that's it. We have the intro. The intro is oh, in the can. It? Wow. It's in the can already. Wow. It took you four minutes. Are you minutes guys ready to go for blue. your guest? You do yes. have a guest in the waiting room. Oh, my. Yeah. Let's go. So, all I right. Want... Let's get this. Let's get this show on the road. Yes. Yeah, so, gun is... here comes my final epic introduction, which I've been told is too long and sounds like a drunk falling downstairs, which is fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. Hang on. I'm having audio problems. Who? No, shh. But I'm not. The first time ever, Shaw <laughs> is not having audio problems for a uh, month. Yes, I worked for an hour and a half to get this damn thing to work. Mike, just go on. You're, 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 you're not hearing you're anybody. There. Well, Pat figures okay. out. Okay. No, shh. Don't. There'll be a pop-up, Pat. There'll be a pop-up that says join with audio, and then you hit yes. You know, uh. If our guest needs a little uh, advice on like radio or voiceover, I can help him. So uh, this is sort of a, of a tribute and homage to you, sir. Here we go. Our next guest hails from Chicago and serves up a career with more layers than a Giordano deluxe deep dish pizza. Ever had a deep dish pizza? It's like giving yourself a reverse colos colonoscopy. Oh, down the first stair. He's been a contributing New Yorker cartoonist since 1998 and a six-time nominee for Best Gag Cartoonist by the National Cartoonist Society, finally capturing the crown in 2017, just one year after the Cubs finally found their golden acorn. He's even got a little studs turkle in him, authoring the book Captain Dad, The Man Manly Art of Staying at Home Fatherhood. Plus, he's an accomplished illustrator, lending his distinctive drawings to each shoots and leaves, the illustrated version where that bastard panda finally gets it through the eyes. And Dave Barry on dads. What Dave Barry was doing on a dad will be worth a story. He's also an accomplished copywriter, which is, again, like being a Cubs fan. Is the effort worth the pain? But at least he's more successful. You can hear me. Winning will somebody a, at least wave? Okay. So. Winning a Cleo Addy. Don't worry. This is live. Mobius and the coveted Golden Dangle Participle. Even better, he has a thriving voiceover career, and I understand he does a spot-on Harry Carey. Hello again, everybody. But even best of all, he's experienced the holy trinity of cartoon purgatory, having survived a syndicated cartoon strip, New Yorker gag cartooning, and now editorial B. cartooning. Pat's left. And like Chicago itself, he's a butcher of sacred cows, a stacker of puns, and the nation's political crap handler. He's stormy, husky, brawling. As far as big shoulders, maybe he should get to the gym more often. Now, batting cleanup for the cartoon pad. He's left. Pat Byrne. He's gone. I'm sorry. It's a wonderfully long intro, during which time Pat couldn't hear, had audio problems, had to leave, came back, still had audio problems, and now left. And the entire time, uh, Shaw, you, you never paid attention to the fact that nobody was there listening to you. No, but no, no. You did a great I, job. And I didn't want to stop you because you yeah, were doing Michael. so well. Michael, I, saw, just say, I saw him leave, but that was not going to stop me. Yeah, I Michael, know. you did fine. It was very Thank good. You. And I love your energy. Thank I love you. your energy. Okay. And and, uh, and Pat, well, we don't know what happened to Pat. I mean, that we've never Pat, had can a, you hear we've us? never lost a guest so early. I can now I can hear you. There was um something so, just goofy uh, going on. Patrick, Patrick, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the intro again. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. You can Do you, you can just edit. Oh, can I do it one more time, please? Sure. sure. I worked so hard on this. Yeah, well, I'd love to hear it. Okay. You, in fact, I thought you were dead when I was. Our next guest hails from Chicago and serves up a career with more layers than Giordano's, Giordano's deluxe deep dish pizza. Ever had a deep dish pizza? 
It's like giving yourself a reverse colonoscopy. He's been a contributing New Yorker cartoonist since 1998 and a six-time nominee for Best Gag Cartoonist by the National Cartoonist Society. Finally capturing the crown in 2017, just one year after the Cubs finally found their golden acorn. He's even got a little studs turkle in him, authoring the book Captain Dad, The Manly Art of Stay-at-Home Fatherhood. Plus, he's an accomplished illustrator, lending his distinctive drawings to Eats, Shoots, and Leaves, the illustrated version where that bastard panda finally gets it through the eyes. And Dave Barry on dads. What Dave Barry was doing on a dad will be worth a story. He's also an accomplished copywriter, which is, again, like being a Cubs fan. Is the effort worth the pain? But at least he's more successful, winning a Clio, Addy, Mobius, and the coveted golden dangling participle. Even better, he's had a thriving voiceover career and I understand he does a spot on Harry Carey. Hello again, everybody. And even best of all, he's experienced the holy trinity of cartoon purgatory, having survived a syndicated cartoon strip, New Yorker gag cartooning, and now editorial cartooning. And like Chicago itself, he's a butcher of sacred cows, a stacker of puns, and the nation's political crap handler. He's stormy, husky, brawling, and as far as big shoulders, Maybe you should get to the gym more often. Now batting cleanup for the cartoon pad, Pat Burns. Hello, gang. That's mostly Hello, worthy gang. stuff. <laughs> Hello. I'm done. You'll can never I, hear from I, me can again. I best news all day. Can I tell you something about uh, Chicago deep dish pizza? Nobody here eats it. Really, That's nobody here. If you're if you work downtown on Michigan Avenue and you're going out for a, you know twenty somethings after work. Yeah, you might grab a deep dish pizza now and then. 99% of the time, traditional thin crust. Wow. A listener is another Cartoon Pad exclusive. Mm-hmm. Pat, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, still surviving in this weird world we're living in right now. From where? Uh, I'm surviving from where? Yeah. Where but, are you in calling the, in from? I'm calling in from Chicago. Didn't you hear the introduction? No, well, we don't know exactly. Yeah. Don't you see the fake graphic behind me? My, yeah. Pat, you're a it's very Chicago. Man. Yeah, you're, that is. That's the Chicago River behind. That's your me. backyard. I know that because I stayed yeah. with Pat, and uh, Pat and I have traded. Uh, we have timeshares with each other, and it's always great to see you again. <laughs> Actually, this is the room you stayed in. It's I'm I've tricked it out as my Zoom studio right now. No, oh, that's great, and you look good. Is so, that Chicago um, pizza? Is that Pizzeria Uno? Yes, that's yeah. a deep dish. Yeah, that's a deep Isn't dish. That and, I had that and, one yeah, time. And, and the, yeah, and that, that's enough. And because yeah. you, you order, if you order it with, I will have it with sausage, and and that's what you get. You get a sausage. It's one like a half inch thick slab of sausage across the whole thing. That's more sausage than than anyone should eat. Um, it's uh, it's it's a bit much. So and the sauce uh, is on top of the pizza. It's all over. It's 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 in, like a big I soup. Mean, it's like a pizza soup. It is. I mean, if you get it. I mean, there, no one gets it. Depends. Uh, there are, there are, you know, if, if you get the right toppings and you balance it just right, it can be delicious. But it's it's not traditional pizza. But it's yeah. but well, it's next, still it's pizza. It's you know, I'm I'm very. Hey, isn't that show? Is that show the bear? That takes place in Chicago, doesn't it? I haven't a clue. Oh, oh yes, it, it, shows it, 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 it does. It's I about cooking. Okay. It's about yes. cooking, and they do um, Chicago. I think. Oh, cooking, cooking shows. shows. They're my favorite thing to avoid, really. I don't <laughs> understand them at all. My neighbor um, spent a long time trying to um, come up with a new food called pizza in a cup. And mm. he did a pizza soup. <laughs> pizza in a cup was had a very short lifespan on the uh, on supermarket shelves. Uh, Michael, I think you bought into that, right? You invested. Well, in my, pizza my pizza in a cup is when I drop my deep dish pizza on the floor and pick it back up. So in my hand is my cup. Pizza so in a true. cup. Pizza you in a cup. Take one of those. Take one of those pieces of uh, like that the Napoli style piece of super thin, like paper thin crust. Roll that up. Stick it in a cup. There you go. Uh, Actually, I hate to it. say this. Okay, who did the Daily Show? I can't remember his name now because I'm old. Um, John John Stewart. John Stewart. John Stewart. He does the quintessential uh, uh, mauling of deep dish pizza versus thin pizza. I recommend it on YouTube. Look it up. It's it's well done. I mean, it's not much of a competition. I mean, what are we talking about? <laughs> well, everyone who's enjoyed deep dish pizza is now dead. So that's the problem. Well, yeah, as a pretty, New Yorker, 
as a New Yorker, you're used to getting a slice of pizza in front of the subway. You pick up a slice of pizza and you shovel it in your mouth as you're walking down the subway stairs. And that's how you eat pizza. But I, I would imagine for a Chicago style, you'd be you'd be like eating this big, weird thing and just kind of like pouring it down <laughs> your face as you're walking down the stairs. One Don't slice worry, but- is a meal. It, yes. One slice is a meal that and. And it takes 45 minutes. You, If you're going to go yeah. somewhere and order deep dish, you know, it's you, you sit down, get it's an hour before you see food other than, you know, and that's why you get the, that's why you get the fried calamari first. These are all good cartooning yeah. tips. Yes. Yes. So right. mo- moving on to well, oh. but then again. Where do our cartoons come from? But from from our pet peeves in life. They're all good cartooning <laughs> tips. <laughs> this is a cartoon right now, Bob. We're writing a cartoon. Oh God, I, I'm and, just glad that and we get one away of from... three of you. One of you will come up with a fantastic cartoon out of this discussion, and I can't wait to see it get rejected. I'm just glad we're going to get away from the subject of pizza in a cup without Michael saying something disgusting. Uh, else, let's move on else, to hot dogs. You left the word else out of that. Sense. Yeah, okay. you see, and also from the introduction, Michael, you see how much Pat has accomplished when you don't play Wordle. He's a he's a busy guy that can't hold down a steady job. I'll tell you. you I mean, he just he just moves from one gig to another. Michael, Actually, this is I, not. I, I a just pod- started you know Wait, before do you know we what? Do you know what Patrick's original career was? Do you know what he his his original career goal was? Which it wasn't a goal. It was an accident. It was an accident, but what was it, Patrick? Just I was, an aer- I was an aerospace engineer, and the reason I was an aerospace engineer is because I wanted to be a cartoonist. True story, one hundred percent true. And I went to Notre Dame because they had a totally student-run daily newspaper, and the cover story I was able to give to my folks, which was also true, is that as an undergrad at Notre Dame, I would get a lot more hands-on time in the wind tunnel than I would at University of Michigan. And they thought, what a thoughtful response. And off I went to Notre Dame. And they and and you know within the first couple of weeks I was up at the newspaper trying to say, can I do cartoons? Well, an engineering major isn't exactly like being an English major. It's like you have to like buckle up boy and you know get right into it. So what were you right. doing? Taking calculus and cartooning at the same time? Um yes. Okay. Well, Two, two things on this subject. First, my eyes are slow. I've, my eyes don't play well together. If you can see the visual in the podcast, it, it'd be worth yes, it. Yes, your hands don't uh, either. <laughs> no, it's, it's, but it's, it's that kind of, a, actually, my hands don't. I, I'm, I can't juggle. So uh, <laughs> anyway, um, reading is, is, is slow and, and, it, and it knocks me out after a while. And uh, yeah, even doesn't matter how fascinating the book the book is. And so uh, I figured, oh man, which would be harder: reading two hundred pages in a night, or you know, muscling my way through three or four impossibly dense ones. And I figured that that someone who was a faster reader would go for the English, but but me, I, I'd rather just muscle my way through, and and that seemed uh, like a better idea. Also. Also, um, and I can come back to another thing that that pegged to this. I, um, I by jumping back, I lost my wow. My I, I think going I, I think oh, your cruise my, missile just crashed. It was my a cup. freshman year, a cup. second semester. Okay, I was taking uh, mechanics, and uh, Professor Brock put his uh. overhead slides up, and I saw his hand lettering. At the time, my hand lettering was crap. And I saw his hand oh lettering, and it was like a machine did it. It was amazing. And so from that point on, all my notes in any engineering class, I, I use it as hand lettering practice. And that's how uh-huh. my lettering went from, from crap to something that looks like a cartoonist. Actually, Patty, Patty, you should have gone to Loyola like your parents. Why did you go to Notre Dame? That's you just <laughs> made the wrong choice. My parents didn't go. No, my my parents. My I'm making this shut up now. I know you are. Yeah, I grew up me. in De- I grew up in Detroit, dude. You grew up in Detroit. Uh, I had a whole yeah. line of Chicago Catholic jokes lined up. Michael, stay in that accent. You're much more interesting. Okay, no. Patty. <laughs> do, do you know what the difference between an Irish wedding and an Irish funeral is? Here we go. One less drunk. Oh, he's the my man. That's right. Come on. Come in on. our dorm, uh, our dorm started uh, an Irish wake party. Did that, you now? 
yeah and so it was just it was basically they, we put some, they put out a phony casket and uh and that was you know an excuse to have a, a dorm wide party and uh, the first year um it was our our the you know the the our dorm director was, was actually they just cut half that 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 name in half and it was your erector and um yeah and uh, father we george, cut it out father worry. father erector uh father george uh was our, our rector and so by the end of the night when the campus police came said uh they they you know they saw in the big community room in the basement um they, they were trying to you know say all right who's in charge here and they said, well, uh, you know, Father George, he was, he's in here somewhere. And they went and they, they found him and he was lying in the casket. He sat up <laughs> and said, I hope you. And it was a, it became a tradition after that. That's a beautiful so, story. So yeah, it's you a bet, did, yeah, you, the, the wake is dear and dear to the culture. Um, so you graduated with a degree in what? In aer aerospace engineering. You got all the way through. I, I did. And I, uh, I got an internship between my junior and senior year at General Dynamics Conveyor Division in San Diego, Ooh. and I got to work in the pre-design. And that's that's like the drawing on napkins and then see if it flies kind of group. This is their creative department, <clears throat> and um, since I could draw, I helped the guy. Most of what I did that summer was helping the guy who put together the technical. And so I, I learned a lot of good you know, drafting skills and, and drawing skills uh, there. Also, I got to do some help that, you know, a college intern would help on. Um, and when it came time, you know, to, to graduate, it, they offered me a job because they, they, they knew me, they felt good, they felt, and um, it was, you know, it was a very lucky turn of fate. And, um, and, you know, I guess cartooning helped me get that job. You know, you are giving cartooning way too much credit. Honestly, never. No, never. I think so. No. Cartooning has been nothing but heartache. Come on. No, see, now, now I know the Pat cartooning as a business does bring heartache. Yes. Our culture undervalues it tremendously, tremendously. All see, of modern art owes everything to cartooning. And, wow. and I, I, even without going back to uh, Da Vinci, who um, was a, a fine cartoonist, but uh Daumier was kind of the you know the, the godfather of, of modern political cartooning and he had a fanboy and this fanboy was you know basically doing caricatures of the folks in his in neighborhood and and people saw them and they were like wow these are awesome and he started making some money he found a guy at a, a, a had a frame shop and he said you know what you'd probably sell more frames if you know you, you had these great pictures in them so they put these great pic these his caricatures in them and people started finding him and having him, you know, say, hey, do my character. All, you know, all the important, notable characters in the neighborhood. And um, finally, a fine artist grabbed the kid and said, hey, you ought to become a plain air painter because they had just gotten, you know, painting tubes and you could go do that. And they and he said, no, 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 I'm making money here. I'm making good money. So and wait, then, wait, Patrick, they didn't have planes back then. So why would they be painting them? Come on. It's it the geometric type. Oh, okay. Anyway, good comeback. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, so uh, we're not going to take it easy on you. He went on. And he be, he did finally buck, uh, knuckle under and become a painter, but he caricatured light instead, oh. and that um, gave us impressionism. Claude Monet was a cartoonist before thank he God. was an impressionist painting, yep. and that that turned art yep. and, and, and led to everything that's this followed. Well, you know, I, my my experience was similar in that I actually have a BFA in painting and it took a BFA in painting to tell me I couldn't paint. And then I discovered I couldn't draw. So why not be a cartoonist? And here we are. And well, you cartooning, you're drawing the idea. If you can carry, right. get the idea across. I mean, the, the New Yorker originally called them idea drawings. Oh, they still do, I think. Back and in the and Thurber, room. he just did these screwy lines, but he he arranged those lines well enough that you got the idea and with enough emotion that you you felt it so it's not something that requires intense draftsman skills but it, it requires some sort of command in the sense that you have connection 
to your uh, to what you're doing. You can do it consistent. I mean, you take uh, David Cypress's work, and it's all these insane squiggles all over the place that doesn't look like it's like if you just looked at one drawing, you're like, I'm not sure if this guy can draw or not. You look at two, you go, I think he's onto something. You look at three, four, and you're like, wow, he's really onto something because he draws pure emotion. Yes, he and is the de Kooning of cartoonists. Well, yeah, I mean, he tried out some he, artists. Well, he took Ed Corrin and he even pushed it farther. And it's um, and it's powerfully effective because cartooning, you're trying to get the scene and, and you don't have a whole lot. You don't have props and lighting to get things across very much. And these days you have less and less space. You need something to you know, embed that emotion. And you have, you know, just you know, line and if you're lucky, a little bit of wash. Yeah. Wash. I was yeah. talking this morning it's, with some cartoonists. I did that about- once. Didn't work. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Sorry. We, we were talking this morning with some cartoonists, and they were talking about how some of the drawings are overdone. It kind of loses that charm by not having the reader fill in those gaps. And by mm-hmm. over-rendering, you kind, of, you kind of take away that connection that you could have with the reader, where the reader is doing some of the heavy lifting. If you look at a lot of old uh, Peter Arno or, uh, or uh, Charles Adams drawings, and they're 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 lush. They look painterly, but if you look at them, there's an awful lot that's just suggested with shadows. They're right. not they're not fastidious uh, about things. It's just they're they're magnificent draftsmen, but it's they they do it with suggestion. That's uh, true. I've never drawn I have never drawn a wrist or a neck, and that's because I don't want to. So the hands. Well, are you've kinda... suggested it though. I have suggested yeah. it, yes, because and other people suggested it to you. Like you, you had to, you had to draw a neck. No, no, I, I've had cartoons returned to me where some editor tried to draw the neck in, and I said, <laughs> "No, no." Really? They actually really. drew on your cartoon? Yes. Well, it was a Roth, and I got it back. Oh, oh. And I, I've gotten cartoons back that says "Draw better." Really? Yeah. And, yes. This is back oh. in the day. This is back in the day when they attempted to beat you into a style. And I had a style beaten yeah. into me. And that was the beginning of the end. So, the past well, can you imagine if someone said that, like if, if I rejected a cartoonist and I said, you have to draw a lot better than this, I feel like that would be on, that would be everywhere immediately. No, it, it, wasn't it, might draw- be good, it might be good criticism, but it has to be a lot more constructive than just saying draw well, better. Well, it wasn't draw say- better. It was draw more deadpan. Don't give the joke away in the cartoon. It's like you can't. Blink, That's good so. advice. Yeah, actually so, is but yeah, I mean, you, you, you got to leave room for the you got to leave room for the reader to you know, to put two and two together. No, no, no. You, I'll I, do this. That. You're too Just, much math. I, I've only I'm, I've yeah. only asked artists to maybe add. I'll be like, can you add a spot color to this one thing because it'll help the joke. That's pretty much all I'll do. I won't. No, I won't you make keep anybody asking me to put fedoras on these guys, and I go fedoras. What is your? You love God. You love these fedoras. <laughs> So much. And, you know, I thought of you because I did something. Mike Reese, celebrated Simpsons executive producer and writer Mike Reese, wrote a really funny article about it was Jabba the Hutt as a uh, regular middle American worker getting home from work with his wife and kids. And it was called Jabba the Husband. And and he's coming home and he's got like a like a regular work shirt. and He's like a loose and tie. and He's got like a newspaper and a briefcase. And he had a fedora on his head. And I I drew this. For the illust- I did an illustration of Jabba the Jabba the Hutt getting home to his you know suburban house, and I put a fedora on, and I was like, Shaw would love this fedora. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I drew a pork Give pie, a and you, yeah. you weren't even into it. You said no, no pork pies, fedoras. Yeah. So I mean, Pat's encountered that. I actually have. I mean, you're making fun of fedoras in a, in a way, but <laughs> I see. I, I I've been I have so many fed- I have a hat collection that's insane and crazy and I can't possibly go through all the amount of hats that I, I've collected, but I just started <laughs> I started getting hats when I was this little kid. Uh my grandparents always had hats. My grandfather always had like nice old fedoras and he, I'd always like play in their closet when I'd visit them in Pittsburgh and I would always wear it like his wearers like the really old school fedoras that have that soft felt that they don't really make anymore. Like no one makes a hat like this anymore. They they do. I've I've got a a stinger with uh, fur felt. My Ooh, pork wow. pie is just regular wool. The felt. pork pie, yes. The hat it's digression, everyone. Thank you. It's a classic. You know, I, I have every to time... wear hats these days because you know I don't yeah. tan. I I skin cancer. So um, and that's the other other Irish thing you get. 
Pale skin. You're so fair yes. and ruddy. Bob. Bob so where's everybody? So uh, as as a non cartoonist, though, when I was a kid, I got to say also being a cartoonist, maybe it's a maybe it's a personality type or a brain type. But like there's definitely all it's like the same way that w w there's always uh, kids riding skateboards. You know, there's always going to be a pocket of kids that are off on the side doing their own thing, whether they are riding skateboards or whatever there's always going to be like these like misfit kids it doesn't matter what generation we're in doesn't matter what year there's always going to be a bunch of teenagers who are doing this including there's always going to be a pocket of little nerds or whatever doing their cartoons and drawing funny things to make fun of a teacher drawing some caricatures and that's where i was always growing up i love drawing the caricatures it it also helped you make friends if you needed to you could just your personality could be cartooning. And I they had a cartooning class in my middle school as an elective I took and I loved it. It was the most it was the best thing I had done. I think it was eighth grade or seventh grade. I love cartooning class and that kind of stuff. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the people that I meet who are cartoonists, where it's like a personality type almost to be someone who like puts something down on paper, but as a joke, you know, like that that's the difference between these serious painters or whatever, like someone who can encapsulate a gag. And maybe goes through the whole trouble of drawing this picture for this one line that's just like a silly gag. It's like a, it's like a, you know how they break up personality types. I feel like there's a whole personality type that's just a cartoonist, and you guys are all probably in that group. Maybe Shaw. I don't know. Trouble. Yes. Yeah. I was trouble. on a, a tour of uh, through the Museum of Contemporary Art here. This is a gazillion years ago. Uh, they they went on a tour of you know, different private collections and a few artists studios and uh you know the, the the tour bus stopped for lunch and we had just come from uh, some um some artist studio and and his his oeuvre was casting plaster casting it but he had two general subject areas one was what he called his head bowls he had shaved his head and made a cast <laughs> of the top of his head and he had some that there was like you just got the crown of his head a cast of the crown of his head and then then next to it would be the negative space and it's like crazy but the other work he did is he would find old discarded commodes and he would do a plaster cast of the u-bend and <laughs> it's like okay you're doing the plaster cast of the interior of toilets and uh, so at lunch, I, 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 um, I, you know, pull out a napkin and I doodled a guy basically bending over, giving himself a swirly and, you know, making a plaster cast of his head in a toilet. And somebody walked by and said, oh, wow, you drew that so quickly. And um, he was the artist we were going to see next. The guy could not draw. He was a fine artist. He was the darling of the art world. He could not draw to save his life. So it's, uh, but he could write a damn good artist statement. And that's, that's, well, that's the, the key. Is. I mean, it's that is not, the key. is it important really if anyone could draw well, even a cartoonist? I mean, it really is just <clears throat> sort of the idea and getting that idea. I mean, I feel across. like they, they draw well in their own way, you know. You yes. know, who's to say? I mean, it's it's a style. So it's like, OK, that style. No, is, it's not. That's no, it's, style. that's bullshit. Bullshit. No. Bullshit. Bullshit. Ha, <laughs> All right. Would you go on and pay for uh, go to see? Uh, this is the Pat concert. Burns we've been waiting for. Go, I'm, Pat, not, go. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go hear who, this jazz draw. pianist. I'm, I'm he saying can't they draw play a way. scale, but you should hear him. It's it's expressive. It's his style. It's noise. He can't play the machine. It, would you go see a dancer that 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 can't do a freaking two step even? No, you Patrick, wouldn't. I can't do Patrick, a two step. I'm going to show you something. Tell me, tell me if you remember that. Yes, oh. I, I still. Well, I mean, but for the part I've repressed. Well, Shaw so, can't draw then, right? No, I, I. Well, I. Here's what Mankoff. We're using this standard. He, he's a podcaster. Here's what here's what Mankoff said. He said there are good good cartoonists and there are good bad cartoonists, and I'm a good bad cartoonist. So okay. I that's my mantra. So Patrick and I were invited to this crazy jewelry show in outside of Indianapolis, Roberto Coin, and we were like the entertainment, and we were going to draw characters. Well, we were actually we thought we were going to draw whatever, just capture the evening. But it turned into, yeah, would you draw caricatures? And I was told caricatures. And I said, no, I wasn't. Well, the funny thing is, since 
Patrick can actually draw and has talent. Yeah, Patrick signs checks. I'm just Pat. Okay, Pat. Yeah. My brother. See, I actually have a twin brother, Pat. So we're Pat and Mike. Uh, I, my, tell, I, I have an Irish twin, Mike. Uh, same, a year earlier or later, the same He's a year, birthday. year older than, a well, little, little less than a year old, 11 months older. So, so Pat says to Mike, Mike, what you doing digging that hole for? He goes, no, I'm not digging the hole. I'm, I'm digging the dirt. I'm leaving the hole. Thank you. Crickets. Crickets, yes. Crickets. And, and so this goes anyway, back to Roberto Coin. Anyway, yeah, we go to this, <laughs> and I said, I can't draw caricatures. I can't do that. So, and here's Patrick just capturing the essence of these people, and he's just sweating blood, right? And, and, and he's, he's working and working and working, and I announce I'm doing my caricatures in a Picasso-esque manner. So I draw everyone's you draw their Character soul with like eyeballs here and eyeballs there. And actually, by the end of the evening, I was getting pretty good at it. And I was kind of capturing their little essence with this kind of slapdash Picasso esque stuff. And here's poor Pat. There was this one woman who, like, he worked on it, worked on it, worked. It was like a dentist who couldn't get that molar back. He goes, Oh, Don't no, leave. The, yeah. Well, oh, go ahead. There, you tell the story. But there, there, well, it was, um, there are a couple that I, I, I sweat out. Most of them I, I managed, uh, except one guy is like, oh, you're the guy I want. He was so excited. And and he waited, and then he got there, and his wife came, and, and, and he sat there, and he was just, like, so excited. And, and you know, first of all, the pressure is is off the charts by this point. And, and, I, and, I, and I'd, been, I'd been on a good hitting streak, and so I, I was due to crash. <laughs> And this is the one I, I, I just, I, I, he was, he was just so hard. Somehow some people there's like, Oh, what do I do? And, it, and I, the expression he had on his face, I, I captured the expression. He hated the expression he had on his face. He looked like he was so hard. Monk. <laughs> he was so he had, he had this happy smirk on and, and it was like, Oh, I, 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 I I ached about that one for weeks. I mean, it, it, it. I wanted to track him down and say, "Dude, I'll do an oil portrait of you. Come on, let me make it up to you." Uh, I enjoyed watching. I actually stopped to watch that. Oh, so you're the one that jinxed it? It was like CPR. You couldn't revive him. <laughs> I said, "Call it. That's dead." Okay. Uh, anyway, that was a beautiful time that Pat and I will. Uh, yeah, have. Pat. I just heard from a friend of yours, a Joshua Friedman. He has a. Uh, some hearing problems and when he's looking for an illustrator to work in an event <laughs> like the one you just described i just got another one tonight and i think we uh, should discuss that just briefly as a public service announcement for our cartoonists who are I, listening I, or joshua freeman well i got hey, one hey, from hey, somebody named named uh th this just this came like two hours literally two hour and a half hours and two and a half to be really specific uh good day my name is kelly i am an academic event organizer and i'm hearing impaired and what? i hope you treat me like any of your other customers with my disability doesn't affect our dealings i hope so too exact same i text. got your contact details online from a pat burns i need the service of an artist or illustrator cartoonist, cartoonist. who has any skills that are beyond michael shores you get the same one right yeah and this is another one from it's uh, from somebody else but it's that same scam letter yeah so we yeah. should let people know that this is not a real job and people should um what should they do if they receive this email forward it to michael yes i'm such a i'm such <laughs> well, a nice. uh, crap cartoonist that scammers won't contact me yeah you'll get there i You'll saw i turn. saw a bunch of cartoonists posted that they all they've been making the round so there's a scam involved and people can get screwed out of money. So don't fall for it. Emily Flake posted about it too. And then a similar thing was happening with a lot of stand-up comics. There's a scam where they'll pay you, they'll prepay you, and then they'll somehow pretend to pay you and then they'll pretend to pay you too much or something. And then they trick you into being like, oh, I'm sorry. And then you send the money back, but there is no money. And you just sent them a bunch of money and now you're never going to get your money back. So... It's wow. a good rule of thumb not to talk to strangers on the internet, and it's even better not to give strangers money on the internet. So right, or well, the never... tragedy is we get our work, you know, from from the phone ringing by some rando, right? and that's awkward. It makes it yeah. difficult. Or never get paid for your cartoons, and then you know it's all clear. It's pure effort. Pat, no do you money. have any legitimate ways to make money? I mean, you have a business you started, and I actually was with Deloitte 
And I was hoping to get a chance to talk to one of those guys about your business, the drawing board. Mm -hmm. I was at the U S open just before you came on, we were talking about my visit at the U S open and, um, well, that group of people could really benefit. As a matter of fact, I, I did speak to them, but I didn't give any exact details. But I thought the idea of your business was excellent. They sincerely were excited about your business. Can you share with us what it is? Why, yes, I can. And uh, we've found ourselves in an interesting uh, niche lately. We um, The drawing board is... Uh, is a company that's not big. We've managed to put some money in some cartoonist pockets, and we're, you know, we're, we're <laughs> we've been on this cusp for a while to be able to open that door a bit wider, open those uh, gates a bit wider. Uh, the idea is that cartoonists, we've been talking about it, have a way of thinking that is a little bit different. Cartooning helped me at, be a better engineer. It uh, just the way I thought helped solve problems in, in ways that other people just didn't see. It was just that that conditioning of trying to take an idea and and turn it and look at it from different perspectives and the the, the visualization of it, the the way we do, and then the way we try and camouflage it uh, with you know, oh, this is gonna be a guy in a desert island, but really, you know who this is. Um, so I've tried to package our way of thinking and, or un, first of all, understand it in a way that we can package it and then tease out what are the sub-disciplines of it that other people can use in their world. And we found a nice fit in uh, the area of business ethics and uh, DEI, all those compliance issues, ESG, because you're talking about culture change. And when people, uh, are trying to change an organization or any sort of culture, you can't just say, well, here's what we're going to do. Here's the roadmap. And here are the rules. You got to get inside. When, um, and, and this part, I, I, I don't have the citations for you handy, but I, I, I can get them for you if you want. When someone just speaks, when we, we speak in metaphor, all, you know, so much of the time, because most of language is rooted in metaphor and we connect to something we've experienced and say, ah, I understand that word. I understand where you're going with it. Um, we internalize metaphor neurologically much the same way as we do lived experience. When you do it with uh, a visual metaphor or, you know, we do that with, with uh, theater and, and films that, re that we connect with. We internalize them like experience. And so cartoons People get to internalize that as if they lived through that moment. In their brains, it reads much like they've lived that moment. In a cartoon, you take a situation or some kind of conflict and you give it a, a flip. You turn it in some way. And so they get to live a transformation of thought. That can be tremendously useful in helping people understand sometimes the things that they're doing wrong. So many of our own cartoons come from things that we habitually screw up in. You know, I got a bad head, but I always put my foot in my mouth when I'm in this situation. But I got a lot of great cartoons out of it. If you read David uh, Cypress's book, bring his name up again. Uh, he talks, he, well, he doesn't talk much about cartooning, but he shows this is my life. And then he drops these cartoons and you go like, oh, that's where all his work comes from. It's, uh, it's a, Pat, a wonderful a example of show don't tell. I, that's wonderful. I have a question. Oh, why don't you ask me? <laughs> is this going to count for mass? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. You can't, you're, you're no, good no. Uh, I used to, oh, that's so a funny <laughs> Catholic flashback. I, I was raised Catholic and I remember as a kid, anytime that we would have to do anything extra, Does I'd always say, does this count for mass this week? Because <laughs> if it was yeah, before Sunday, form. I'm like, Ugh. so. All so do you do any, us have been to Sunday school, I believe. Do you do any birthday is, parties? Because I'm in. <laughs> but Pat, what well, exactly this is a great mean? Pat. I think this whole business is a wonderful idea, and I think that you're so on the nose with the way the cartoonists think, and, and like the way that you know. I went to school for illustration, and just like the way that a artist can visually communicate an idea, and we have to boil it down to its bare essence because we only have you want to do it in as few lines as possible, and then as few words as possible if you're going to be writing like a gag caption Amen. you want it to be as short and sweet as possible and you want this cartoon to be as simple and uncomplicated to get your to get the joke across and you see it all the time where you see a perfect cartoon and it's practically 
either a no caption, it's just one image and it's simple. And that's like, that's like, that's like the holy grail of getting like that perfect gag cartoon because it's universal. There's no language barrier and, and everyone seems to get it. And then you see other things where there's, it's too busy or the caption is way too wordy. It's like you could knock off half of those words and get the joke across faster. And that kind of efficiency is so beneficial everywhere else. You know, like it's a, it's beneficial when you're trying to get a cartoon to be perfect, but it's just as beneficial at any like a PowerPoint pitch, marketing, communicating mm-hmm. with other people at your, at your work or trying to do sales, like boil it down to the essence of the idea. And, and that's what a- Bob Bankoff used to start uh, the, the cartoon bank. He saw that, oh, here are all these businesses. They're basically stealing cartoons to to open their their pitch or their their presentation or to get across really complex ideas. And so he you know, opened the cartoon bank and for uh, while that was going great guns, it was uh, it was wonderful. You'd find your stuff. In you know big economics presentations, uh, so many textbooks and cartoons, you know they're 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 the example that let you uh, say, oh, now I understand this concept that I just read eight pages trying to explain. Uh, they yeah, they they're great distillations and they're um, they, they they can show us so much. And so we try to teach people to undergo the, the 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 discipline it starts with just like you know putting a pen to paper because even just doing that touching your pen to the paper you you have a place to focus your thought and is, is this like a workshop or do we you... do work yeah we do workshops primarily and uh, you know, we did uh, just recently the global ethics summit and we had compliance officers from you know few dozen fortune 500 companies and here we are trying to get them all right you're gonna be funny now um and so the idea is to be able to send teams of cartoonists out to to show people all right here's uh, how we how we think why we think it and here's some exercises to help you think it and get start building that mental muscle and if you need us to come back and and help you train more we'll do that too so uh, Bob and I will be sending you our cover letters. Bob, you got to, you know, let's get you it know, together. My idea, my goal is, however, down the road, if we can generate enough work, it's, it's, we'll get, we try and spread it out so that we can get more money in more cartoonist pockets. Because, and, you know, if, if you really want to get me preaching, uh, <laughs> get me started on, on where cartooning should be in our culture. It should be a hell of a lot higher than it is. And once it was, and it earned that place, it earns it still, but the way we've had our whole distribution mechanisms disrupted, we got kicked to the curb and um, we got our, our to get our way back. Our cheese really got moved. I'm just going to say yes. that. Our cheese, cheese de- got, definitely got moved. Not only got moved, it got eaten. Yeah, well, usually the cheese it it, it 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 doesn't move. Things don't move with too much too much cheese. It 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 stops. Yeah, it's I know. a binder. Hey, I'm up it's in a Wisconsin. Binder. Yeah. I have to say I love Chicago because in the uh, summer I'm a Cardinal fan, and in the winter I'm a Packer fan. So Chicago supplies me with a lot of entertainment. When well, I was there's in a high sports school, time, everybody. When I was in high school, <laughs> I had to do a presentation, and I actually made it all i used all just new yorker cartoons or newspaper cartoons to do the entire presentation and it was called name that incongruency Mm -hmm. and i used cartoons to show what when people had to identify what in the cartoon what was the twist like what was the thing and it was basically the entire presentation was do you get this cartoon dummy (laughs) (laughs) what is it why is this funny and and people and then we would have to I but it was a great it was the entire thing was based around New Yorker cartoons. And I had no idea that I would be talking with New Yorker cartoons for a lot there of my go. career. And uh but, yeah. But, but that's I mean um, it's right. It's it's a timeless thing and it's amazing to go back in the big red book from the New Yorker cartoons. And so many, I mean, so many of those still make sense because mm-hmm. they're not like hyper time sensitive. I mean, a lot of stuff now seems to be hyper time sensitive. But some of the stuff from like the 40s or 50s or whatever totally still holds up. A lot of them still totally make sense. You'll see a lot more fedoras in those, Shaw. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that's when every, even a hobo wore a, a fedora and a tie. He did. You know. He sure did. 
people Those dress better. Though. Well, I mean, you're wearing, a, you're insist- wearing a hat, so hats are coming back. Yeah, he's wearing That's a ball a cap. cap. I'm, I'm, you know, I think next a couple of shows, show I'm expecting you to wear a fedora. If you're going to be wearing a hat, you should be wearing a good hat. <sighs> you, you used to offer them, didn't you? I thought you had them on sale in your haberdashery section of the uh, weekly humor. Humorous hats. There is a section called humorous hats. So you know, uh, Pat was has also toiled as a copywriter, which I have for many years. In fact, my uh, entree into Wisconsin, working for Land's End, and that's where I first started seeing New Yorker cartoons because they would give me a pile of them that they had commissioned during uh, the holidays. And I still remember they gave me like a woodman with no caption. And they said, could you put a caption on this, Michael? And it was, <laughs> yeah. And I go like, yeah, sure. Why not? Because I'd do anything. So it was like all these, uh, it was um, uh, reindeer between two airplanes, uh, like two jetliners, and one reindeer is talking to the other one. So they go, we need a caption. And I said, well, how about this? How long is our lay- layover in Cleveland, right? So that was the gag, and they printed it. And then I got all this hate mail from people telling me <laughs> that I had uh, insulted Cleveland, which I had to re- had to reply to each one of them and said, yes, I did. Thanks for writing. Uh, continue to enjoy our catalog. Your pal, Michael. How is that an insult to Cleveland? It's just like you, it's you, well, that's like the cartoon. And... I mean, if you're not offending or confusing or uh, unamusing somebody you're not trying because if you do a cartoon that everyone gets then you've done family circus family circus is a great cartoon family yes. circus is a new yorker cartoon in this it's in the same vein it you know it it may not be uh, targeting you know our demographic so much but when i was a kid when i was a little kid that's what hooked me on cartoons specifically gag cartoons. the family it, circus yeah, family yeah. circus is great. Yeah, and well, then there's so also really a thing. Agree. There's a I'm thing online here. where it's uh, it's uh, Nietzsche family circus. Has anyone seen that? <laughs> no, it's dark. It's very. Yeah, that's that's very good. But the real family circus, I'm sorry, it doesn't hold up, and I I don't think the joke writing is so strong. I, I'm defending it. Be, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm back. Attacking. I'm going to defend the, the adjacent cartoon. I used to write the gags for the Lockhorns and. Um, that like to me that was, to me that is those Zero. there's some jokes there. I'm sorry. There were some jokes. I uh, no okay, Family I Circus was, was great and it was adorable and I love it when you have the little like uh, path, the crazy path that they would take mm-hmm. and the little dotted. I thought that was very clever. Oh, it, was yeah, it got funny. really funny after the 400th time of using that gimmick. I just wish you would wander out into the freeway. There was and another not, group and of six year olds. When every every time there's another group is is it it really targets a young reader and invites you in. Well, and, it's great uh, for this, for that demographic. Right. I wouldn't call it a great cartoon. No, it's no, like great cartoon. Pat, yeah. Pat, Pat is, is a, so uh, Pat yeah, is I, a Pat is a cartoon universalist. I can tell. He embraces. I like Pat a lot, but I find that Pat and I knew this a long time ago. Pat and me are very different. Yeah, we're very different senses. Well, you still have your hair, for one thing. No, but Kai, we've talked about how I, I've always wanted you to be more selfish as a cartoonist. You know, I don't. You're thinking things of the whole landscape, the whole cartoon landscape. And I'm, I'm a huge Pat Burns fan. I would love to see you do more of your own work. And uh, it, it's, you know, I yeah, think I, it, I'd, I'd love to have the. I mean, I would love to do more. Of, of my own work. And now, uh, what work are you doing that, these It's just days. that there's nowhere. It's just right now. Right, we're in a uh, an inflection point in no, the industry yeah. where you know. I want to mention you and me you the only cartoonist. Something. You and me are the only cartoonist who worked for American Magazine, a magazine that used to run cartoons uh, all the time. Voico did too. Oh, I don't know that cartoonist, but I'm referring to the yeah, largest. He'd... Catholic magazine in the world. And uh, uh, did you have did you have uh, Jim Martin as your editor there? No, I had a woman. I'm trying to think of her okay. name. Well, Jim Martin was the editor for a while, for a long while, in the beginning. Yeah. And um, I mean, no disrespect to any other cartoon uh, cartoon editor anywhere, but he was the best cartoon editor I ever had. And what uh, made him good? Explain why you felt that he was so good because i didn't know him he well first of all he, he's an insanely smart um yeah you know, yeah you know, jesuit 
and uh, he's uh, he's he's gone on to be you know more much more big and famous. He's a pope um, now, right? And, no, but he's he's a uh, he's a cardinal. He plays third base. He's got no Thank movement you. to his left, though, Michael. That's always <laughs> he's all he's all field, no stick. He was, he was, and that's so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Pat. Go ahead. Like he's like he's become like the official uh, or quasi official um, liaison for the church to the to the LGBTQ okay. alphabet soup community. Um, he's uh, and when there's any kind of big theological issue in the news, you'll often he'll pop up. Oh, this is I I Jim what Jim Martin. Martin, yeah, smart yeah, I guy, worked, I was sensible, four years. fundamentally decent, great sense of humor, sure. and here's the best part: his his rule was, uh, yeah, and uh, was if I laugh at it, I gotta buy it. If he laughs oh out loud, he's gotta buy it. It's like yes, he bought cartoons that, um, you know, I, I showed my wife. I said, look what they bought, and and, and she looked at, and this is the things that you know the New Yorker rejected. And she, they bought that. The New Yorker would never run that. Because I was either too edgy or your. Oh, I know. Uh, I he I called me fiction jokes. Yeah. Well, he called me once and he said, um, "I just called you because we got a letter from a subscriber who you know wrote to cancel their subscription because of your cartoon." Keep up the good work. Yes, good. That's <laughs> a very that's a very Jesuit <laughs> point of view. I I did, I did four years at Xavier University in Cincinnati, so I came to respect and fear the Jesuits. So they, you got to have two, two PhDs to get in. That's right. And then you Pat, have to do the spiritual exercises and a whole lot of mescal again. Yeah. You're good. Pat, they liked the cartoon I did. They ran, it was the cross, Jesus on the cross. And he has the two people on each side of Jesus on the cross. And one asking Jesus, what's he going to do after this? What are you doing after this? And they <laughs> ran that. And that's just another example. Really? That's, yeah. that's, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. And, and, you know, and, and I still get I see a lot of um or groups of like funny God cartoons that will pop up one. I had one run in Weekly Humorous by Matt Barton and Adam Cooper. And it was they had a whole a whole series like a, like half their batch were God cartoons. Like it was just like they went on a tangent as people, I guess, do. They just like have a I, I get a and, surprising um, number of religious cartoons in The New Yorker for some reason. Yeah. No, I but don't it was a really zero. funny one. It was no, my last it was, cartoon uh, was sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it, um, Shinto, it was uh, what's happening? God was opening a window just as he closed the door, and and the, the two angels go. He 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 always opens a window after he closes his door. He's obsessed with airflow. The great cartoon. That's it fine. was a good I don't cartoon. Get it. I don't get I've it. I've gotten zero cartoons about religion in great the great Kinky Friedman song. I've gotten zero. Non My last cartoon are two devils, and the the one guy's at the uh, got a big stack of papers, and he says, "What's saved to the cloud gets printed in hell." In hell. So there you go. Yep. Four four issues. That's ago. on a lot of refrigerators yeah. right now. I hope so. So anyway, I want to say Patrick has one of Pat. Sorry, probably has one of my top five favorite cartoons of all time, and that's because. It's in a collection but, by Lee Lorenz. It's a no, Lee Lorenz no, it's, cartoon. It's, and I have it's it the now. cartoon that has the gag line is not spoken, but you think it. Can you come up with that one? Well, we're not going to guess. What is it, no, Michael? I, it's pi r. Oh, right. But all right. So um, clever. It was. It was. Do you ever have theme days? You got to have theme. In my living room, yeah. Where, no, where you, where you walk, where you walk down the street, and maybe you see a guy with with a flaming pink tie, and you go, "Oh, that's a bright tie," and you move on, and you don't think anything else of, of it. An hour later, you see someone else in a flaming pink tie, and then you go, "Oh, that's 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 weird. That's that, but that's a coincidence." And then when you see that third person in a flaming pink tie, you say, "Boom! It's a theme. This is the theme today." Um, I would often use, you know, have theme days. I think there days. might be a sale uh, on ties somewhere around there. Today, today, in fact, uh, it was a theme day. It was it was women driving a car with bizarro headgear. Uh, you know, one wore the, wore this thing. It, it, it wasn't. Um, it, I don't know. It, it, it was just draped over her head, and it was like that reflective, uh, like uh, cloth. It was. Um, you know, like that you put over somebody that that's no, but it, it was like like a um, it was almost like lame. It was uh, and then then there were there, but then there were a couple other odd, uh, weird. I mean, strikingly out of place. Seeping head, head wound. 
And one, and often I, um, one that happened more than once was white cane day. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then I, there'd be an eye patch day. Fedora day. And it was a fedora day, for instance. Oh, geez. I loved her work. On, nice cold. On, on, on the cup day. Uh, one eye, on one Pizza of the, the many day. eye patch days, I'd be one of like, gosh, um, and I, I'd want to do anything to make somebody just say, ah, because they're wearing a, an eye patch, you know? Like with Mark Gerberg, you just ask him and he'll do it. But <laughs> but you want to, and so uh, <laughs> I would I I wouldn't say that because I didn't want to get punched. And and then it occurred to me, oh, I could make on yep. and uh, there it was, are... and it wasn't originally. And it said long. Don't worry, we'll get the New Yorker, there. The New Yorker had me change the caption on that one. I had but what one, was one the what me... was the gag? See, I didn't it was say like, the gag. Um, uh, say pi what squared? Long John, you should be able to get this. Originally, I had it. Hi, what squared? Captain Pete, you should be able to get this. <laughs> I just felt it was just wackier to have Captain so, Pete. So there was the pi r squared, and there's also the one about uh, Japanese theater. You had your little pun run there. Yeah, that was a that was a, um, and and there was a woman. Some she was you know, a very bright, you know, PhD type woman. That asked me about to explain that one, and it was uh, in in a Japanese theater with. I had to look up an image in order to, to capture it right. And somebody was you know, saying to somebody else, and this is the time like when th this line was all over every sitcom, what part of no don't you understand? But it was N-O-H for no, the Japanese no theater. And oh, I thought um, that was a brand of Japanese pizza in a cup. Yeah. That, um, okay. It, <laughs> it's coming were, soon. To, those are two to a sake house near you. That Patrick drew that I still remember. They're just stuck in my head and will never come out. That and the little baby. My condolences. Grim, the little baby <laughs> Grim Reaper, along with the uh, Zen uh, uh, litter box garden. All and those were in the rejection collection. Yeah, those. those <laughs> For <laughs> nah, uh, reasons that were easy to figure. Oh, are they uh, in the actual rejection collection at the in the Diffie book? Yeah, they're in the, probably the first edition have that. of it that's a great um, book you know when pat pat works dark he goes there it's it's pretty good um you you go where you you follow your muse that's all you follow your muse okay. and it leads you down a dark alley and hopefully we're amused. do you guys have you guys found i mean have you used jokes from your personal lives um spouses or family members or friends and you've put it into a cartoon and they've seen it and they've been like i don't like this i don't like how you've you've made me into a goof has that happened to any of you that you've you've turned you've turned people into a gag cartoon well, my wife was telling me that when i came down here you know that i should you know, give her credit for half my material because <laughs> uh yeah actually once she had a reactions the the internet was down while she was trying to look up recipe and um and, and she uh said something like you know we can't cook the internet's down and you know she <laughs> and then she thought say wait a minute that's ridiculous. And so she said, here, I wrote something down for you. <laughs> Do this. And the New Yorker bought it. Wow. So <laughs> the uh, the immensely curly haired woman that appears in a lot of my cartoons is actually an homage to my wife. Probably my favorite one of her is the woman is meeting the Grim Reaper. And she says to the Grim Reaper, oh, you simply must meet my husband. So I like that cartoon. Okay. How's the editorial cartooning get going? I'm fascinated by that. Well, that I never wanted to be an editorial cartoonist. I avoided it. Um, it was Bob here that nudged me into taking a swing at the daily cartoon uh, back toward the end of 2016. And I thought, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, I, 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 I had, you know, well, my uh, first book of gag cartoons was What Would Satan Do? And I said, yeah, that's, you know, the, the ethical realm. That's more my territory. Of course. And then, you know, with uh, the way things changed in the world, uh, I realized, oh, politics had drifted over onto my turf. And so I thought, okay, I I reached out to Bob Mankoff and that, you know, got me a, a good run on the daily. You know, you know, began during the first hundred days of, the previous administration and uh then it was about a little was it two years ago now that um daryl cagle from cagle cartoons uh, syndicate uh just emailed me said hey want to do editorial cartoons and i thought eh, let me think about it i asked a couple of people and i said yeah you, you, you should and so um i've 
since told uh, the syndicate, I'm in this for only as long as the culture wars are raging, when things settle down and democracy is safe, and we can go back to doing cartoons about <laughs> boring, wonderful, wonderfully, delightfully boring policy issues, um, I'm gone. Because, so you're doing this uh, forever. I hope not. I so hope is, not. I hope we you, have. I hope we just. I hope we burn out. I hope we just. I'm burned burn out. out. Are you doing? Yeah. Are you doing a daily cartoon? No, it's um a minimum of two times a week. Okay. And uh, then whatever else I you know find time for. Pat, can you please explain where we could find those? What's the website? Uh, KegelCartoons.com. That's C A G L E Cartoons. Dot com. And when do you post your new cartoons each week? Does it go up like a certain time each week or is it different no, each week? No, it's, it's like when I, as soon as I finish it and, uh, and the, the paint is dry, I slap it on the scanner and, and upload that sucker. I have an original of yours in my apartment. So you're the uh, guy who took that. It's like, yeah. We're sending have, you in the FBI. We're going to get get a search I have warrant. a Trump cartoon of yours. I'm, I've just been looking for the right frame. It's been taking up like two years of my time to just get the right <laughs> matter and framer. But it's going to go up predominantly on the wall once I do get the right framing for it. Well, Try putting little bars in it like gal jail cell. Oh, framers. Doesn't it seem <laughs> to me consistently when you go to a frame shop there's a lot of good frame shops you go to a frame shop and you're like get like a little thing frame and you're like take it in and you're like i just want this framed and they're like oh you want a mat and you're like i guess so and you get a mat or whatever he's like okay that's going to be seven thousand dollars yes like, this is a lot for framing yeah it's a... that's why go you, to joanne that's... joanne yeah. fabrics they they and the, the, the all, and you'll always find a coupon and if you say, yeah. oh, I just want to get a frame and it's got, well, no, but if you look at the, there's a coupon, there's a deal right now. And if you yeah. have us do it, it's, it's actually cheaper. And go know. to, go to Hobby Lobby and we'll throw in a Bible. Wait, yeah. you can't go that. Yeah. Don't they go to steal Hobby them. Lobby. They steal them from hotels. <laughs> Let's clarify. Hobby Lobby is not a sponsor of this podcast. No, no, you go to Hobby Lobby and then you go have lunch at Chick-fil-A. Come on. It's great. I used to love Again, those, Michael. Uh, that Joanne Fabrics. I used to I used to get lost in Joanne Fabrics. I used to make I a lot of puppets. Ah, uh, I didn't have any friends. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean if that you're is sad. making puppets, yeah. I'm a Michaels guy. I like Michaels. Michaels, no I think is Michaels is great. Out. I used I used to I still love Michaels. If you go to Michaels, ah, yes. uh, and then I found Norwin a place. Under. There's a place called uh, Ocean State Job Lot. Has anyone ever been to Ocean State Job Lot? No, oh my God. The they've got, they've got, can, you can get a 16 by 20 canvas for like $1.99. I, I went yep. crazy. I bought like so many canvases. I still have them in my closet. I, I, I'll never paint this many portraits oh, it's on this many canvases. You could buy a canvas for $5. I, um, I got to tell you, my ultimate Michael's hack, I went in once and they had, uh, was it half price on Bristol board? And I bought them out. Oh, wow. And the next time I came back, they had like a limit of three. <laughs> and I, I think nationally I did that. They call so, it the Shaw rule. Now. They did. And then they said, oh, uh, so they had this thing where they would put things on sale. They'd have a 50% coupon, but it wouldn't count for things on sale. So I'd go in, I go, everything's for sale. What's the deal? So I bought the most expensive set of uh, markers I could find, like 150 bucks for 75 bucks. I go, I'll take those. I figured there wasn't a big profit margin. Um, I can't go in like, there. That's because... exactly what we wanted you to do. Yeah, yeah I, I can't know. Go in I there have such a music they play. They play Toto sometimes in the sound system and it brings back mm. bad memories. And Say, stuff. Bob, are you suing them because of that? I am. They're playing I that's Toto. Gonna, I think that's going to be funny. Could be a premise for a bit. Okay. <laughs> Inside Pat, humor, everybody. Pat, is there anything else you want to say about um, fedoras before we let you go? Because um, we've kept you over an hour and we also want you to get in the last word. It It is great to see you. Uh, yes. It's, yeah. It's great to be visible. It'd be nicer to do things in, in, in meat space. I miss that. Oh, but to go to out, I do have to wear, I do have to wear a hat these days just because the sun gets through. See here. I understand. But why is the it there? Yeah. So that's, that's where I show my age. But the, why is it the, 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 why does it have to be a red fedora? I, I don't wear a, a red fedora. Actually, it's, I, you know, the straw hats that are like fedora-ish. I got uh, several of those. Fortunately, my mother-in-law has, uh, she has, you know, they're, they're a great gift for, you know, Father's Day, birthday. And, yeah. and she has great taste in those sorts of things and buys me 
wonderful hats that I would never you know, have the taste or. Marty uh, offers up a, uh, so a it's full like, line of pith helmets. And where can I you do find sell, them, I, I, I do sell pith helmets. Yes. They're okay. handsome. I, thought we I, have, I, I, I actually I wear one. classy hats. Classy hats for me. I have I have a top hat for sale. I have fedoras for sale. I have a whole bunch of these little like the cabbie hats and stuff. I, <sighs> I found a place that sells all these funny. I'm like, does anyone buy this? And I, I'll, I'll no one buys the hats. I'm the only person that has bought a hat from my store. So I wanted to message. see what they look like. Wait, are they, they all hats that that fit you in the first place? They're all the same size. The well, they have, you know, they have different sizes, I guess. Oh. Uh, I just bought. What does your hat size? store have? I have a derby. Uh, I have a like a like a round. It's great. It has a little feather. A derby. Have a bowler. A bowler. No. Yeah. Hamburg. Yeah. Yep. Pat, do uh, you have no a shop in your no website? No one wears hats. Stoker's cap. No, I don't. And do you have a website? I do. It's uh, patburns.com. It's the and, restless mind. And of I Pat just read it's. Um, I think next year's it'll it's like its twenty fifth anniversary. Wow. Wow. And it's still in it's still in basic HTML too. <laughs> Old school. That's yeah, nice. oh yeah. Old school. You know, you realize like what do I need? And what about for people who want to contact the drawing board? That's cartoonists.com. Wow. And you can look us up and um we'll have happy to talk about getting your people to 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 we uh the way say it's with our our great line with um Compliance issues. It's compliance through compassion, not compulsion. Oh my! Yeah, well, that's we're... that's a bumper sticker. Nice and, and I, I'm I'm sure you guarantee optimum clinical outcomes too. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we do. We have a very. We'll, we'll get a, We'll get a lawyer. Oh, I used to be in med. I used to write for medical devices. So if you get into that realm, I'm there for you. <laughs> yeah, you always had that little footnote asterisk, and then down the root of, yes. read it. It says not really. There's amazing humor in the urethra. Okay. That's you. a signal that's time yeah. to sign off. <laughs> You're um, gone too long. Next time we got to, oh, wait, Pat's got to do our voiceover sign off. So I, I want to yeah. hear, thanks for your time this time till next time. Thanks for your time until next time this time. What? I need a script. Thanks I need too. a script. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get into the fact off. that Pat was a voiceover. Um, for, he was a I did wacky voices. I did he wacky was crisp. I just yeah, give well, us quiz. Yeah, let's just give us some quiz. Because, yeah, that's the elephant uh, in the room. I let me. Uh, get the I've show. got the microphone is right here, and I, okay. I, I'm afraid I'll blow it out. Um, I was. I haven't done that. So quit the best taste ever to come from space. <laughs> it, it, a little I'm, I'm a little husky there. tonight. Uh, that was good. He well, he was. It was uh, uh, Dawes Butler was the original voice of it, and it, and it was very. It was a very Jerry Lewis. And how yeah. does that help you sell in cartoons when you meet with art directors? You use the voice you said. No, I I don't. I hear the don't. When you draw your cartoon, do you listen? Do you hear them? Do you hear the characters talking to you? Yeah, they're saying quit. <laughs> it's, it's so you do. Like so you do. I, and then you, you have you listen well. <laughs> I just I just feel it's just a little, a little eerie though that Chris the character people remember the cereal box. He wore a red fedora. He this is, green, is this I think he had a crisp? green beanie. Are we talking he about a beanie? Crisp? He had a propeller on top of his head. Yeah, green beanie. But it was a it was a modified red fedora. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, I know. You're thinking of Lucky Charms. Mm. The blue Ooh. moon. Who me Lucky Charms? Do you want to grab yeah. me Lucky Charms? How painful was it for you to hold back using that accent? We went a whole 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, won't count funny. for mass because it's been purgatory. And, yeah, and Pat. Is... Uh, did you do any other voices before we sign off? This is your chance to uh, bring back some of those characters we've missed so much. Um, Did you do Mr. Yeah, Ed? No, no, no. no. Was I, I can, uh, Arnold the pig. <laughs> do, you, do your Bishop Sheen. Oh, Bishop. Yeah, the Bishop yeah. is I, here. Is the Bishop in the ooh. house? The Bishop. Did your right, brother, right. is your brother? Um, My brother is a Bishop. It's, yeah. That's and does he do the funny voices? No, he Joey? doesn't do that. Joey Bishop? He's, I love Joey a, Bishop. I love no, yeah. Joey Jack Heatherton. Paul. I loved even more. There's oh, who two. wouldn't? And everyone yeah. else did too, from what I understand. So your brother was married to Joey Heatherton? Yes. Uh, don't let. Yes, uh... um... <laughs> and Pat, do you have one brother? We're... You have a whole. I just have one brother. Oh, They're just the two of us. Okay, great. There's not much uh, of an uh, Irish Catholic family. That... <laughs> and who's the cop? <laughs> yes, a cop. This is guys. <laughs> My mother was going to have a doctor and an engineer. She ended up with a priest and a 
and a cartoonist. Oh, well, well right. I wasn't a cartoonist yet when she died, but and nor was he. Uh, he was just going into the, and my brother was just entering the seminary too. So. And, and Michael, you've done Bishop cartoons. Pat, have you? Oh yeah, yeah, I, um, um, yeah. One ran fairly recently. I, I have, I have one cartoon I can never sell, and I've offered it up to the New Yorker a hundred and fifty times. Yeah, offer it up. It's the it's the Pope, the papal rally cap, and the Pope's going down with the with his big cap upside down. <laughs> See, okay. it's a classic. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, it, I've got I one right now. I'm working on the old Pope's home because we're going to have two Popes retired. So it's the old Pope's home, and there's two Popes in the rocking chair. Look at Michael yeah. being topical. I it's love thinking. it. I think we're thinking. I, and that, let's we could end. I it did there. A, the only Pope joke that I couldn't sell to them was uh, it was it was the Pope mobile, and and then there was the, you know the security walking down, sure. and, and the security were just these you know old school nuns with rulers. <laughs> That that would take something to draw. I like that. It was it's good. So, well, well Pat, thanks for having uh, us on on your show. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's wonderful having you. Um, the Pat I, Bird I Show, everybody. Come back next week. Say hello um, to Doctor Hartley for me. God, I would love I'll, to. I'll, I'll have three new guests. Me. Thank God. Uh, no, it really was fun being on your show, and uh, it's good to see you. And um, Likewise. Let's say thanks to all the listeners, all the cartoon uh, cartoonists and cartoon lovers. Um, you got this far through the show. Reward yourself by getting a new copy of my new cat book. Michael, exactly. you have anything to plug? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Marty's got some lovely fedoras on half sale. So there you go. Yeah, go get Good. some fedoras. Go and everyone fedoras. go to the drawing board. The drawing board. Read all about it. That's where it. it's happening. That's where That's corporate happening. landscape is changing thanks to Mr. Pat Burns here. And, and, and our whole coterie of cartoonist colleagues. That's right. If you wish. If, if you wish. Okay. All right. Here's a teaser. Caption scramble. Caption scramble. The wordle of cartoon content. That's all I can tell you right now. More news coming. Okay. Thanks, everyone. And uh, until next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Pat, thanks. <laughs> oh.